The Hawker Demon was a interwar biplane fighter aircraft developed from the slightly earlier Hawker Hart light bomber. Entering service with the Royal Air Force in the early 1930s, some examples were still in service at the outbreak of the Second World War. Hello everyone, I'm Matt and this is Model Minutes, and join me on the workbench today as I show you how I built this Airfix Vintage Classics Hawker Demon in 172nd scale. For a more in-depth look at the contents of the box, take a look at the unboxing video I made on that topic. For this video, I'll be primarily focusing on how it builds and what it's like in the end. I'll pop a list of products on the screen now that I used, which might give you an idea of the kind of things to get if you fancy having a go at this for yourself. As a quick side note, Airfix recommends this kit to those aged 8 years and older due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. As with the majority of my builds, I'm going to start off by removing the parts that I need from the sprue. Initially, I'll do this using my side cutters and then sand up any rough areas and flash. There are quite a few areas of flash on this kit that do need to have the excess plastic removed. And at a few points, I decided that my knife would be the best thing to remove these stubborn bits. After quite some time cleaning up the parts, I started painting. I'm going to use this Hataka airbrush ready paint on the inside areas. I know you're supposed to put it through an airbrush really, but it actually works fairly all right just by being brush painted. A couple of thin coats were needed. Next, some precision poly cement from Humbrol was used to glue the retaining pin into the back of the propeller. Tamiya extra thin cement can now be used to glue the fuselage halves together. They were pressed together and then the cement allowed to flow between the joins. After this, I sanded those areas nice and smooth to try and hide them a little bit. I used some sanding paper and my sanding sticks to do this. Now I'm going to use this aluminium paint from Vallejo. I put it through my airbrush and sprayed it onto the nose area of the fuselage. The rest of the aircraft will get a slightly different silver colour paint later. Once that was done and it was dry, I then masked that area. The lower wing surfaces could then be glued onto the bottom of the model and this was followed by joining the rudder to the horizontal tail surfaces and then gluing that into place. The support struts on the bottom of the model could then be glued into these areas and this was followed by the tiny little tail skid. Sadly, some of the parts for this kit are broken on the sprue, so I'm going to try and repair them here by gluing them back together before I remove them from the plastic frames. Vallejo silver paint was next to be used, and this was sprayed onto all the other remaining components. This should give a slightly different finish to the aluminium I used on the nose of the fuselage earlier. And when that was dry, I could carefully remove the masking tape protecting that aluminium from earlier. Humbro 69 gloss yellow paint was then used to paint the hubs on the wheels of the landing gear. A couple of thin coats would be needed. Next, the machine gun was carefully glued onto its mounting part. And to paint this, I'm going to use Vallejo Gunmetal Grey, which I've thinned down with a little X28 acrylic thinner from Tamiya. Thinning down this paint will help it flow a little bit better onto the components. Some Vallejo US Field Drab acrylic paint was then added to the Gunmetal Grey, which I've already got in my mixing pot. This was then mixed into a sort of rusty, metallic, paint that I used on the engine exhausts. I'm not quite sure of the exact ratios I used here because I pretty much mixed it up by eye. After this I would use the US Field Drab as it came out the bottle to paint the propeller. And when that was done some Vallejo Black was used to paint the back of the propeller blades as per the painting instructions. I'd also use this on the tyres of the wheels. Now it's time to do some decals. The decals are printed by Cartograph and they look absolutely fantastic. I cut the sheet into more manageable pieces and then would proceed to soak them one by one in water ready for application. I'm going to use some micro set in the blue bottle as my setting solution for this build. 
I'll apply this to the model where the decals are going to go and then add the decal on top. The micro set should make it settle down into the surface details a bit better. The control panel one was a little bit fiddly to get into place, but on the whole, the majority of them aren't too bad. The larger ones take a little bit of care as well, and the wheels needed a little bit of manipulation to get those ones in the right place. But after a little bit of time, I had all the decals onto the model. Now for the second stage of the setting solution process. I'm going to use Microsol in the red bottle on top of these transfers to really sort of melt them into the details and look as if they are painted on. To seal in the decals I've just applied, I'm going to spray the model with some gloss varnish. This should help protect all of those transfers from being rubbed off in the future and also give a more uniform finish. But because I still want to maintain that difference between the nose and the rest of the aircraft, I masked up the nose again and then sprayed the remainder of the aircraft with the matte varnish to try and dull down that shine. So the nose should be quite glossy and the rest of the model should have a slightly more matte finish. I find the Vallejo range of paints quite good to spray with. When that was all dry and the tape had been removed, I carefully applied cement to the mounting bracket for the machine gun and then glued it in place. This was then followed by carefully installing the gun sight in front of the cockpit for the pilot. Now it's time to start with all of those little support struts for the upper wing. Not a massive fan of this step as it tends to be the most fiddly part of a biplane build. After quite some time and patience, and feeling as though I needed a few more hands, I eventually got where I needed to be and could move on to installing the landing gear struts. Again, another fiddly step. This is the thing with biplanes, they are quite fiddly by nature, which is why I tend to leave a few things off at times, particularly the rigging, but I'll talk about that a bit later. And with the landing gear done, there's only a couple more bits to do, such as installing the engine exhausts, it was at this point that I realized I'd forgotten to install the propeller, so I cut off the retaining pin at the back and simply pushed it into place where it needed to be. Finally, the last things to add were the pilot and gunner, and I won't show you how I painted these because I used the exact same process that I use in a lot of my builds, so if you'd like to find out more, take a look at some of my other videos. And with that, my build of the Hawker Demon is now complete. So, what do I think of this kit? Well, actually, I rather enjoyed it. Now, despite the fact that it is a vintage kit being derived from the original 1957 tooling for the Hawker Heart from Airfix and then upgraded in 1968 to be the Hawker Demon, it is reasonably good. The fit was generally quite good in places, but there was a lot of flash on quite a few components which needed to be cut off. The detail, however, is fairly reasonable. Yes, it is of the raised nature, which was typical of that time period, but generally it goes together quite well. There are a few little issues like around the engine exhausts, where they sort of press on the support struts for the upper wing and make them bend, but those are problems that I am happy to live with. There are some areas where I could have improved this kit further, such as cleaning up those ejector pin marks which are on the bottom of the model, and also adding rigging. But as most of you know, I like to do things that I enjoy, and rigging kind of isn't one of those things at the moment. But for those of you who'd be curious as to what a rigged Hawker Demon might look like through the magic of Photoshop, which took me about 20 seconds, this is what it might look like. For comparison though, I'd like to give a quick mention to Champion Scale Modeling's video on this very topic which he conducted a couple of years ago. I'd consider my build here to be a fairly basic standard build, however Champion Scale Modeling has gone above and beyond with a few extra tips and techniques which are definitely worth checking out. So I'll post a link in the description to his video and if you go and take a watch, let him know that I sent you. But anyways, back to the review. 
This kit cost £6 back when it was released a couple of years ago, which I think is about right for what you're getting. Yes, the tooling is really old, and some of those plastic parts were damaged and there was quite a lot of flash, but for someone with a little bit of experience, it was easily remedied. Airfix reckons this is a skill level 2 kit, and despite having a fairly simple paint scheme, I'd be inclined to agree that it does take a little bit of work and previous knowledge in order to assemble a kit of this vintage. You might think to yourself that £6 is a little bit steep for a vintage tooling which Airfix potentially may have already recovered the costs from, but don't forget that we're also paying for those brand new cartograph transfers, which when they originally released this kit back in the day, they wouldn't have had transfers of this quality, and I'm more than happy to pay for those transfers. The instructions were relatively easy to follow, being the sort of original instructions which were just updated, and the colour painting instructions on the back of the box were really nice to see as well, as it makes it much more clear at what you're painting and where you're painting. But yeah, on the whole, I'm pretty happy with this kit. It's not a kit that Airfix are dressing up and trying to pretend that it's something when it's not. It's abundantly clear to you when you purchase the kit that you are going to be buying an old model. And fair play to Airfix because there are other manufacturers out there who are more than happy to sell really old toolings as part of their current range and without doing any research you'll probably end up buying something you thought was new and really wasn't. But I think it's probably time to wrap this one up here. This is a inexpensive model of an old kit, which with a little bit of time and patience can result in a fairly attractive looking model. It may present a few challenges to those just starting out in the hobby, but for those with a little bit of experience, it shouldn't be too difficult. Let me know down in the comments what you think of my build and if you think my review was fair. As always, quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give the channel. A massive thank you to these guys on screen, and I'd like to welcome to the club Jonathan, who joins us as a channel member here on YouTube. To find out more about how you can get involved, take a look at the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, drop in a like and subscribing to the channel if you're new here would be greatly appreciated. Finally, I think the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.